Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan Roders. Woo! What's up? <laughs> we are happy to be together, brother and sister duo, and we are going to be answering your guys' questions. So today is Q&A day. Oh, yeah. Yay. So before we get started, though, Morgan, do you want to pray for us? Yeah, let's do it. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time, and uh, I just pray that we can uh, beat Valerie and Mariah's Q&A session. I'm just kidding. No, but I just pray, Lord, that you would bless this time, um, that you'll give us wisdom. I know sometimes when it's Q&A, it's just like, oh, we'll just answer these questions real mm -hmm. fast. But I pray that you can help us to answer them quickly and efficiently, but also um, that you'll give us wisdom into what your word says. And so I just pray that we'll be able to um, just apply everything that you have taught us and uh, thank you, God, that you are still teaching us. And I pray that everyone listening will be blessed by this time. And so we give it to you, God, and we ask for your Holy Spirit to lead us. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So this is, like, different because we don't really do Q&As. We usually do Q&As on our Instagram Live. Mm -hmm. And I do that with Valerie, who is in there right now doing the cameras. Thank you, Valerie Patterson. And Ooh. also with Mireya. So she's been on the podcast before. But today we're with Pastor Morgan, which is even better because we got we got a pastor here. So I'm excited for all you guys who don't know. He is my big brother. Morgan is 26 years old. He just turned 26. Mm -hmm. And he is a pastor here at Calvary Valley Church. He is a worship leader. He um, also is the youth group leader and he is the young adults leader. He does basically everything. No. Um, I'm thankful he's my big brother. <laughs> Kevin does and most of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Kevin, shout All out to Kevin. All the hard work behind He'll the scenes. He'll be on the podcast next week, so get stay yeah. tuned for that. But Morgan also, um, he's just a really wise man, and he's a man of integrity, and he's not a perfect man. Mm -mm. He admits his wrongs, and that's what we're going to be talking about today too. Mm -hmm. So um, if you haven't followed us already on Instagram, follow us at Calvary Conversations because that's where you guys can submit your questions, and mm -hmm. we'll be answering some of those questions today. So let's get into it. Okay, the first one's just kind of a funny one, like a fun icebreaker for us, for people to also get to know us. We're also going to have like questions about the Bible, questions um about the podcast um questions about us mm -hmm. and but mainly the bible and we're gonna give you verses so mm -hmm. yeah let's ask you first <laughs> what's your favorite hobby Mara? okay my favorite <laughs> hobby in the past i really liked basketball um i still like sports mm -hmm. but i think now my favorite hobby is I don't know. I listen to music a lot and I like finding like good artists. That's not a hobby. That's <laughs> a pastime. <laughs> but yeah. um, hobby, I don't Fishing? know. I, I like to <laughs> swim kidding. with no. Trinity. Not that I'm a good swimmer. Valerie's a good swimmer. Um, I also like to play sports. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning to play ping pong with my dad because we have a ping pong table. Mm. I don't know yeah. if that's a hobby. Yeah, she's getting, <laughs> she's getting pretty good though. She can almost beat me. I know, almost. I'm not fast. good though. Okay, what about you, Morgan? Yeah. What's your favorite hobby? I like to whittle, you know, just kind of... <laughs> Woodwork? No. I actually, <laughs> if I had the money and if I had the room and stuff, I would like to be a carpenter to... Like Jesus. To, yeah. But not <laughs> just because of that. But yeah, I like to play guitar, um, long walks on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> no. But with Vel, uh, yeah. But we oh haven't yeah, even we been to the beach yet, I don't think. Oh We've no. only been married for two years. we try to stay away from California. California? California. I was to say. Fornication. Oh, Californication. That's what you say. No, California. Yeah. But his wife, Vel, she's been on the podcast. If you haven't seen mm -hmm. their um, episode on their love story, well, God wrote their love story, but mm -hmm. that we will link below. But yeah, Valley is his wife. She has an amazing story as well. She's my sister in love. I love her so much. And love you, yeah, Val. We love you, Val. Um, this <laughs> is gonna I be do a fun like hiking with her. <laughs> oh, and yeah. hiking. Yeah, hiking. Yeah, well, Valerie has to take us out on her kayak I again. I went backpacking recently. That was pretty fun with Ryan. So yeah. Shout out to Ryan. I want to do some more <laughs> of that. It's a little toasty here in Tucson though. Yeah. So don't want to do it now. But yeah. Hiking. What about... What's your favorite verse? My favorite verse right now is, well, it was going to be the one 
that Morgan's going to say. You can share it. No, yeah. no, no. I'm going to say a different one, but no. it's still an X. Okay. It says, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Mm. Acts 20, 24. So I like that right now because it helps me realize that this life isn't about me, right? Mm -hmm. It's worth nothing unless that we are doing what God's calling us to do. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is sharing the good news with others. And I just really think that it's cool for me because like with the podcast too, this little side note, but people have asked us about our podcast too. So this is kind of one mm -hmm. of the questions, but um, I think before I was kind of making the podcast last year about like, I was so consumed about getting the good guests and like, how did I look? I mean, I still struggle with that. That's going to be a struggle. Um, but I really was realizing I don't have to look at this as, Oh my goodness, this is my calling. Like I better do it. Well, we got to get a lot of followers and all that stuff. But now when I look at it as, no, this is something, this is a tool. This is a resource, <laughs> a resource mm -hmm. to share the good news. It helps it a lot more to not like be all conceited and like mm -hmm. make it all about me. So just, making sure my motives are right, that I really understand that I'm called to tell others of the good news of Christ. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, I feel like we can, when it becomes work and when it becomes a day-to-day, -day, we can kind of get depressed sometimes, mm -hmm. but we, we don't have to. We can do all our work, like Colossians 3.23 says, Amen. for the glory of God, right? And uh, yeah, my What's favorite yours? verse was uh, Acts 14.13. And what, I feel 413? like... 4.13? Uh, 4.13. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ryan knows it better than me. But mm -hmm. I feel like we go through seasons where there's different verses that speak to us more. And this one, sometimes I save them as a screensaver. And so this mm -hmm. one was saved as my screensaver. And then uh, Vel, my wife, shared it with Mariah. So then Mariah liked it as her Tried favorite Tried to make verse. it as my screensaver, <laughs> but it was too big. So. Yeah. <laughs> really? You got to figure that out. I'll teach you. Here. <laughs> I'll show you guys. Teach me the I don't know if ways. you guys can see it from there, actually. Listeners can't, but the YouTube there you can. Go. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Follow us, subscribe on YouTube if you guys are listeners. Oh, yeah. Listeners can't. Well, listen to this if you're a listener. <laughs> Acts 4.13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, mm -hmm. common men, they were astonished. Mm -hmm. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. And... I like that, not to make excuses for not being that smart. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't want to be, I don't want us as a church or as Christians to just be known for our intellect because I think of the Pharisees, they were just known for that. But instead, I pray that people will know us by see, recognizing that we've been with Jesus, that we've spent that time with him. Not that we just sit in silence all day long, but that we are seeking him through his word that we're going and ministering to people, even in the work, even in the day to day. So that's why I love that verse. So yeah, yeah that's a good one. All right. We're going to get rolling through these questions because we mm. have a lot of questions. Um, I'm going to get to them. Okay. So the first question, well, we answered some questions, but how do you know if God is speaking to you mm. and what does it mean or look like to hear the voice of God? Mm. So I can start with that if you want me to. Yeah. But I think it's really important to know that, you know, God does speak in different ways. You know, I believe that the Lord, the most important and the way that I believe that is the most solid is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So reading the Bible, um, because I think so many times when we get into like, oh, this person said this or like an angel came to me, which is another scary thing because it could be an angel of light, could be the enemy or something telling you to do something that is against the word of God. And that's how you know it isn't right because mm -hmm. you got to judge it to see. But I think the best way is definitely through the Bible. So mm -hmm. read the Bible daily and uh, a tool, like uh, some advice I would give to people is just read first, like it says in um, 1 Samuel 3.10, the Lord came and stood there calling at, as the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. Mm -hmm. So that's what we should say to the Lord is like, speak God for we are listening. Like we want to hear you speak. So I would say that before you pray, I mean, before you read the Bible to pray and ask the Lord to speak to you through the word. So um, I forgot who said it, but they're like, when you're reading the Bible, make sure that you um, 
you don't stop reading until you really hear something that like mm -hmm. ministers to you. And how I know that God's speaking to me is, that Henry is it Black kind of, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. with experiencing God when it like hits you personally, like, whoa, mm. that was for me, like a the rhema, rhema word. word. Yeah. And that's really powerful. And also sometimes is like God confirms it with other people. Then God speaks to other people because someone comes to me and shares like a verse or something and it like hits me again. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I know God speaks to me in ways like I'm in public and I feel like God's like, I hear a voice, like a still small voice, like go talk to that person. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to. And it's like, I feel my heart like pounding. And then I usually know if it's not a bad thing, if it's not a yeah. sin and it will edify and glorify God. That's I think we ask so much like, how do I know if God's speaking to me? He's because we know he's speaking to us, but there's some things that we don't want to do. There's some things yeah. that we don't want to give up. And it's usually very clear what he wants us to do. Amen. And uh, also with that experiencing God thing with Henry Blackaby, he said, there's some people, there's this guy, I think who came up to him and said, I haven't heard the voice of God in years. Mm. And, he, and he said, go back to the last thing that God told you to do that you haven't done. And so God's saying like, hey, you need to do this. You need to finish this before I entrust you with more. Amen. And, you know, I'm not saying that God just gets stuck on things because there's probably a lot of different things that maybe we've disobeyed. But we should we should look back and be like, God, is there anything that you've asked me to do already that I haven't done? You know, because sometimes we're asking for things, but he's like, hey, I have work for you to do already. You shouldn't be asking for more yet. You need to be faithful with what I've already given you. So and in James, uh, it talks about like you ask, but you ask with wrong motives. Like a lot of times mm -hmm. we ask for things, but they're not according to the word of God or what the will mm -hmm. of God. Because like you said, we have our own agenda. We want what we want, but we need to say not my will, like the Lord's prayer, but your will be done. Yeah. So we'll move on to the mm -hmm. next one. Um, it says, what is your favorite Old Testament and New Testament book? But Or if you don't have a favorite, what mm -hmm. are you studying now? Yeah, I've been jumping all over. And I thought you were going to ask me what God's been speaking to me. Oh, but yeah, that too. I skipped it because we were talking about I feel like God's really been seeking me, like just the word trust. It's really funny because mm. I was like going to say that in the little plaque right we have in front us. of us yeah. says trust in the Lord. So trust really has been a difficult thing for me. And the way that I know it's difficult is when my prayer life isn't as fiery and <laughs> as passionate. <laughs> um, because I feel like when I can trust the Lord is that, like I can pray more because I know that this pr the prayer is are powerful because I'm talking yeah. to God almighty. But when I start like not trusting the Lord is when I do things in my own strength mm -hmm. and I like work, work, work really hard. But I love, oh, I don't remember who or said we, it. Or we think really hard. Like we, yeah. instead of praying and trusting, like you're saying, we think and we think, oh, I can strategize. I can plan. Mm -hmm. I can persuade someone. But it's like, no, you need to pray for them mm -hmm. instead. So. Yeah. so God's been yeah. speaking to me. Like, do you trust me? Like, trust mm. me. I've got I cut you. you off. You said you're thinking of something else. I don't know. I was just saying that it's good yeah. to know that, like, um, if you had, today's the busiest day. I forgot who was saying it, but today's uh, the busiest Luther, day of my life. Yeah. So I must pray all the more. Yeah. Like, that's how we need to look at it. Like, I'm so busy today, but that's why I need to pray all the more. Yeah. I so. need God more today. Amen. Um, what about you? What's God been speaking to you yeah, really quick? Yeah, just to be humble and to focus on God more. Uh, I know that sounds cliche, and all these things can. And it's sad because we we know all this Christianese. We know uh, that we're like, oh, yeah, the answer is Jesus. Mm. But he really needs to be the answer. So yeah. uh, just humbling myself because some people tell say, oh, Morgan, you look so humble. But I'm like, that's a... That's probably a false humility a lot of times mm -hmm. because there's so many things that I'm prideful about inside and I deceive myself. And so mm -hmm. God's just been showing me to humble myself and to put him first and then others uh, before myself. Because yeah. I was just thinking about, about it. Think of it. Can you th just stop thinking of yourself for just three minutes? Mm. You know, I know that's kind of hard because it's like, Stop thinking about the pink elephant. You know, it's a hard when you say it, but it's so hard for us. And I thought one of the ways to stop thinking about ourselves is to pray for others. Amen. It's to, to pray for others and to spend that time with God and to meditate on his word. And that gets you, get, that gets you off of yourself. So Amen. that's it. That's good. Yeah. All right. So what is your favorite Old Testament and New Testament? And what are you studying now? We mm. can do this kind of quick. Yeah. I was thinking I like... I like Isaiah. There's so many good verses in there. And uh, 
that was a book that I was studying and reading through when I was actually courting Vel. And so mm-hmm. I remember sending her verses and then she would send me verses about it. But um, I thought about it because I, I just read Isaiah 40 verse 1 mm-hmm. and I have it right here. It says, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So, yeah, like Isaiah, there's so many good books. It's Mm -hmm. so hard to pick a verse, pick a book. But then also in the New Testament, I'm really liking Acts because I want to move more in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the gifts. And I want to do it not to promote Morgan, not to promote the church but like the word of god says to edify yep. to build up to bless and first corinthians 13 before it talks about the gifts in chapter 14 says to do it with love so that's i'm really enjoying acts too so that's cool. yeah what about you i just had my thing at my you're looking I had for it, it at um no She's i had like, it at isaiah <laughs> Russian it's roulette. Definitely like, which book? in the old <laughs> testament <laughs> which is the craziest one but mom our mom um she's going through mm-hmm like uh stage four metastasized breast cancer and so mm. she we were having like a quiet time together and she's just really been in love with the book of lamentations and i have never really thought of that book i kind of like skimmed through that <laughs> but i've been like reading it and i think it was lamentations chapter three it says great is your faithfulness which it talks about but that was like been so powerful so i encourage you guys to read lamentations and it's actually cool because there's like um I didn't realize that, but in chapter one, chapter two, there's 22 verses. But then I think in chapter three is where there's um, more than, I think it's six, is it 66? But there's like all these like hidden things with it. Yeah, 66. And then chapter four is like another um, 22. Anyway, something cool about that. I forgot what I was learning, but lamentations has been really helping like us through that hard time and then the other one in the new testament is definitely been revelation for me right now not revelations there's only one revelation (laughs) so take off the s guys um but yeah the book of revelation because my dad he went over it how many years ago was that two it was i think 2018 2019 and so i just remember like listening and doing that but i wasn't doing my part to really study it so the lord told me to i feel like the lord told me to study it but i'm like we've already done that and then god confirmed it through a sermon i was listening to it was like vody bacham and he was talking about how powerful like the book of revelation is Mm -hmm. and it was it's a really good sermon actually it's talking about um the church's modern day it's like they sissified jesus or something Mm -hmm. it's really powerful but anyway so that those are mine right now it's cool that you said revelation because when I edit the radio show, we're going through Revelation with Pastor Craig mm-hmm. right now. So, um, But yes. it's from years years ago. So if you guys want to watch those videos or listen to that, uh, you can find that on the website, calvaryov.com. Or you can look at the YouTube page, and it's all on there. Mm-hmm. So And on yeah. Thursday and Friday, our podcast episodes are on, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, moving forward. Okay. Can I listen to ACDC as a Christian? You? Yeah. Not you. I'm just I have a shirt no. that says um, highway <laughs> to heaven. Oh, it says. Um, it says Jesus. With but it the, looks like ACDC. I think it has. Yeah. The S of Jesus is kind of like that. Um, uh, what do you call it? Like a lightning bolt mm-hmm. or something. And yeah, people are like, what? You're wearing I'm AC. Like, and nope. then they look at it. They're oh, cool shirt. And yeah, it says Jesus. What does it say? Jesus highway to heaven, him. not hell. Highway to heaven, and Jesus is right there. So, yeah. but my dad, before he was a Christian, really listened to it. This mm-hmm. is—he wasn't asking this question. My dad knows the answer to this, but a lot of people—it doesn't have to just be ACDC, like this question asked, mm-hmm. but just in general, like that type of music. What would you say about that? Does well, it affect them? Yeah, I I don't listen to it, but that's where Highway to Hell is, right? Yeah. So it's yeah, like it's very dark. Why would you be singing Highway to Hell as a Christian? That that just might be a little little weird, you know. My dad jokes about it because he was when he was a baby Christian, just a week in the Lord. He was you know sincere, and he's just like the guy who led him to the Lord or and his mentor. He called him up. He's driving and he's listening to Highway to Hell. And he's like, mm-hmm. what are you listening to? He's like, I'm listening to Highway to 
oh <laughs> and he's like mm-hmm. yeah i probably shouldn't be listening to that right and you know i'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't listen to any secular music no. or anything but there's certain things it's like why why would i be singing that why would i be allowing that to be in my life and then you also think of it this way you think of you don't want any area or any way for the enemy to come in you don't want to give the enemy a foothold so i know that we've been forgiven i know that we've been covered with his blood but that doesn't mean we should be blatantly allowing things like that and and darkness into our life so i think we're going to talk more about the darkness and the light Mm -hmm. right so, yeah. yeah and it definitely yeah like you said it opens the door to the demonic and it's very dark but mm-hmm. okay um the next question is how do i flee when i'm getting tempted so like if someone in the moment is getting tempted with something what do they do hmm. your favorite verse well yes, it is I'm, my favorite verse. yeah why don't you say that one <laughs> because oh yeah i said it changes each month it. right yeah so second timothy 222 i like that mariah is good at quoting that it says, so flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. So flee it. What does flee mean? Run. Run, Drop right? your coat and run. Run away Joseph. from it. And uh, I really like the picture of, think of a fire, right? Think of a, a flame. Think of a candle. It's really easy to put that out. But what about if you let that burn, say there's a fire in the house and you let that burn for 10 minutes, right? The whole house could be on fire and that's way harder to put out. So don't even, first of all, don't even start the fire, right? (laughs) But then make sure that if a fire does start, that you put it out right away, that you flee, that you get out of there. And I also like, uh, I think I have the verse somewhere. But it's making no provision for the flesh. Mm. Let me see if I can find that for you guys real quick. Um, Romans 13, 14, make no provision for the flesh. What does that mean? So that means like if you're going camping, you would take camping supplies, some provisions, Mm. right, to make so that you can actually camp. Um, So if you want to indulge in the flesh, you have to do certain things, right? But making no provision means getting all of that away. So if you're an alcoholic that and you want to stop, that means even if there's an ad on the TV screen that you change the channel, that you don't even look at it, even though it's not there in front of you, that you don't want even that thought in your mind. So just fleeing it. So Amen. that's the and best And then the way. other verse um, I think is good with this is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, The mm-hmm. temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. Mm-hmm. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so you can so that you can endure it. So a lot of times people use that verse out of context context they use it as like oh like i can um oh my goodness i totally just blanked um (laughs) that he'll always give you a a way out of like bad things no not out of hard situations but temptations that's what that verse is talking about so you can't ever say like god has tempted me that's another verse because the lord tempts no one he all but he's the one who always gives you a way of escape satan Mm. the enemy the demons, that's what tempts you. They, they're they the ones tempting you, trying to get you to fall. But everyone always has a way of escape. Some people are like, well, I couldn't or I didn't. But sometimes the way of escape is doing something that's uncomfortable. Yeah. Like if you're not alone in the room with someone or your boyfriend or girlfriend and something like is about to happen, you might have to be really awkward and just run out. And they're like, oh, I wasn't gonna do anything. It's like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I know that was awkward, but I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want, or just anything like and that. And then in that situation, mm-hmm. you see... I should be making no provision for the flesh. So I shouldn't be, I probably shouldn't be alone, you know, with my boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, without any supervision, right? And that's just making no provision for the flesh because we know that even though maybe we have good intentions and we want to be pure, we know our flesh is so quick to rise up. So, Amen. All right. Next question, which... We won't get into it too deep, but I'll show you resources we have. Mm -hmm. It says, can I watch Harry Potter or horror movies as a Christian? And so what I would say is we have videos in the past. Um, We did a QA and a actually with Stephen Bancars on this, and I can link that below. But we're talking about Halloween and why as Christians we shouldn't celebrate Halloween because it is literally 
a day that worships darkness and all the has all these pagan things and stuff. I know people are like, but what about Christmas and what about Easter? I'm like, yeah, but that is people have like taken it and it's like gone other ways, but we're glorifying Jesus. But this is directly worshiping darkness. And the Bible talks about it in um second Corinthians six fourteen. It says, Do not team up mm. with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? So we shouldn't be thinking, oh yeah, it's okay. I can have fun. And so the video explains it a lot better, but we actually have Harvest Festival every year on October 31st at the church. And so we celebrate the light. We pray for the children who are being um, taken, who are being sacrificed and all this stuff going on. It's very dark. So, Mm -hmm. um, and the thing with horror movies, same thing, like we're talking about ACDC, it opens the door to a lot of um, demonic stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Harry Potter, also the person who wrote it, has actual um, spells. Uh, like, I think yeah, it's yes, yeah, spells. spells in there. So anyway, people say she's a Christian, but she is not. Mm. Um, but actually, that verse ties along with the next question. So we're gonna move on. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next question says, um, "What does it mean to be unequally yoked?" Mm. So it kind of works with other. Yeah. Do you want to read the other verse again? Yeah, and Amos then, three three says. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to meet? And and, the second and there's another, story. yeah, it's like, how can two walk together unless they're agreed, right? Mm-hmm. If someone's saying, hey, we got to go this way, or hey, we got to go this way, someone's going to, you know, compromise, or, or they're going to be going different directions, or maybe not compromise, maybe they'll meet in the middle, but you have to agree on the direction that you're going. And unequally yoked, think about that. It's like, what's a yoke? It holds like oxen mm-hmm. or some something like uh, some animal together so that they can do work and if one one is pulling this way one's pulling that way it's just going to cause so much tension so many problems and it's going to be exhausting and you're not going to be efficient and you think about that in marriage or relationship um just imagine how if you have if you don't have the same type of worldview or vision you know Hopefully it's a biblical worldview and that you're submitted to Christ. But if you don't have that, then it might be okay in the very beginning. You might be able to get by, but years down the road, it's, you guys are going to be drifting apart. Mm-hmm. You think of it like a, like a gun sight, right? Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're aiming through the sights, but if you're just a little bit off, it might not matter much like a foot away but yards away, it's going to be way off. And you think about that with a compass, anything like that. If you're just one degree off, then you'll find yourself way further. And so we don't want to be like that. We want to be equally yoked, being on the same page and not putting ourselves in in those situations. We have to define the terms. We have to make sure things are right and that we have, we're on the same page before we get started. So amen. Amen. All right, and then it says, the next question, what are godly men looking for? And I'm going to ask this directly towards you, Morgan, because you're a godly man. What were you looking for? You know, <laughs> when you were looking for Belle, when you saw her, what were the things that you're like, hey, this is what I want in a wife? Yeah. Well, uh, sometimes people do like a list of things, like what they want their spouse to look like and things like that, but... I didn't even go there. There's there's some things where I was like, oh, that'd be cool if my wife could sing with me. Mm-hmm. And but but that was just that's all external things, right? Yeah. That's but the first thing is a woman who fears the Lord, yeah. right? We read about that in the Bible. You had the Proverbs verse for that. Thirty one thirty. It says, "Charm is deceitful mm-hmm. and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised." Yeah. So a woman who fears the Lord, because why? Mm-hmm. If if the woman fears the Lord, that's that's what's most beautiful because beauty is fleeting. And don't get me wrong, we want someone that we're attracted to. Like I'm very attracted to Vel, but that doesn't mean that that's the only thing holding us together because that's pretty weak. If if you're only if that's all you're looking for is attraction, or even if it's just something like even if it's just intellect or something like mm-hmm. that you need you need all three it's like you need attraction you need you need all these areas of life and so but the main one is loving god because if they love god then they're gonna respect god and they're gonna love you they're gonna respect you and 
and then they're going to be on the same page as me because that's what I want and that's equally yoked. So that's yeah. the main thing. So yeah. yeah. And I think that it goes like both ways, like godly mm-hmm. women, what, not that anyone's asking this, but I believe what godly <laughs> women want, I'm asking this, but what She's I think what godly, godly man. women <laughs> want true. is like the same thing. They want men who they don't have to be afraid that they're not under headship or yeah. under any, um, I guess like they're in the discipleship. Like it's important to have a man that, you know, he's going to church, you know, he has, um, mm-hmm. people who are discipling him, who, where you don't have he's to able drag to, him along. Yeah. And then also so, yeah. the fact that he hears the voice of God, like a man mm-hmm. that fears the Lord. And you know, that if he's doing something, he shouldn't, that he's going to ha- he knows he's going to stand before God. Mm-hmm. Um, and that at the end of the day, he's a humble man. I think that's a thing that girls are really looking for too, are guys who are broken, not a false humility, but like truly like I am a sinner, but this is why I know I need to be in the word. This is why I know I need to be around good, solid people. This is why I know that I need to like be able to get help when I need it mm-hmm. and confess my sins. So I think that's like the thing that both yeah. guys and girls are looking for. Yeah. And, or should. And just go back to the Bible, see what the Bible says, mm-hmm. because we know it's like, like I don't want a wife who's just going to be, domineering and trying to rule over and trying to just be loud and obnoxious and you know and things like that just trying to just get in the way of things not like that you know and then but then you don't want them to be like oh it says in the bible women to be silent so women are good you know people take these things out of context and they're like what women shouldn't talk it's like no we want we want uh we want a balance of that, right? So we need to look at the whole counsel of God, Amen. not just one verse, not just what we feel we like, but that we we need to see that. And as long as we're pursuing God, as long as we want what his word says, then we can see what a godly woman looks like and desire that. So Yeah. yeah. And also the fact that they um, are going somewhere. You know what I mm. mean? Like they know they're calling. Yeah. Um, not like they have to be a podcast host or like anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like what I was thinking of myself, but they're, like you said, they're in the word of God and they're like, God, what yeah. do you want me to do today? Well, they're that's the somewhere. sad thing is most people are looking for a spouse more and than. more than doing what God's will is. Mm-hmm. You know, God is like, I have so much for you to do. And when you're mm-hmm. single, you have so much more time and yeah. you have so much more energy and you're just, you just, re- you don't have kids, you don't have a spouse. So you can use that time for ministry mm-hmm. and then you know you're running the race and every once in a while you could peek and see is anyone keeping up with me is everyone is anyone on the same page and they're like oh well you know then that you see your spouse there you know and then you get married and then you're on the same page mm-hmm. same mission and they shouldn't slow you down yeah it shouldn't be like oh now i'm married so now god's will is shot no it's like this is supposed to enhance my ministry opportunity. We're supposed to encourage each other and bless each other. And yeah, you're going to have to spend more time focusing on them sometimes and to make sure that your relationship's good. But I feel like the, or I believe, not just feel, but I believe that when those two come together, that ministry should multiply and that you should just be even more of a blessing. Yeah. So that's true compatibility. Yeah. Cause I remember you were saying back in the day, it was based off smells or something. Smells? Compatibility. Oh, it was like funny. Something no, funny. no, no. Yeah. Someone was just talking about how like <laughs> armpit smells and sweat is weird. That's not, and they, there was like is. a weird dating thing like that. They're like trying to <laughs> make people compatible based on their scent. And yeah. Was, and people do it based off how ho- people are crazy or things. But I was listening to this thing with Matt Chandler and he was like, if I based off of hobbies and things like that, me and my wife don't even like the same things we liked mm-hmm. when we were like younger. He's like, it has to be based off of like your calling and are you both going in the same direction for the Lord? So anyway, next question, where are all the godly people and can I online date? Cause they're like <laughs> where they're at. So what would yeah. you say to that? So there's been some, some okay stories maybe with online dating, but I feel like usually I'm not saying you're not like it's your you have bad intentions if you're online dating, but usually it's just because we just want someone. Right. And we just want someone now. We want some. And I feel like I believe sometimes those intentions are wrong and maybe they change and they get right and you find the right spouse. But 
usually it ends wrong as well. And so I believe, I just believe in trusting God, but that the man, you know, as a man, we're supposed to pursue, but that doesn't mean that we're supposed to be manipulative. That doesn't mean that we're supposed to be a stalker. That doesn't mean that we have to be like, oh, I have to find someone, so I have to go online. I believe that God will put that person in your life, but then you have to pursue them. And so there is a, let me see, I thought I had a verse for this, but yeah, Matthew six thirty three, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Amen. And I know that's hard uh, to say, especially now because I'm married. So people are like, hey, you're married, Morgan. But yeah, I, wrote that I was single a couple, yeah, a couple of years ago. <laughs> so I was going through this too, but yeah. we're not supposed to just do things in the flesh and sometimes online dating can be like that, but I'm not saying it's it's complete sin also or anything people like that. Who they so. say they are, like they're yeah, trying to be a on lot their of best deceit. behavior. There's and a lot like of my deceit. dad always says, you kind of need to st- not stalk them, but kind of for a year, like <laughs> be around them, because it can be really easy to deceive someone by just talking and communicating online. Or yeah. even if you meet them, like they can put, they're gonna put their best foot forward. They're gonna look their best. Yeah. But when you're in a setting with them, like at church and you can see them around other people and friends and stuff and you're just their friend first it makes it so much easier um instead of just being heartbroken because you found out that they're a weirdo and they lied about you want to see how they interact in real life yeah exactly and uh it's it's too Mm -hmm. hard online so yeah i don't know i i don't use online stuff yeah i don't have facebook all things are lawful but like it's yeah. <laughs> farmers only.com. I heard that's a pretty good one. Yeah, <laughs> that's kidding. where you should go. Those no. who are in Mariana, first <laughs> Corinthians 6 12, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. Like yeah. you can, but is it really profitable? I don't know. Okay, next one. We got to move through these modesty standards, girls versus guys. Hmm. I like what Give you said. Uh, what did I say? You said, uh, oh, yeah. Mariah right. sent me this. She said, wake up and ask God, am I dressing for <laughs> for or to attack a certain person? <laughs> I meant to say attract. Or <laughs> am I dressing to respect a person? But it's funny. She, she meant to write attract, right? But that I thought that was good. Girls like, do attack, attack guys like I a mean, cute guy at church. Well, time. it is an attack. on. You think about it. Oh, it is good. an attack on their mind, right? That is and good. you're are you trying to bless them and help them? Not bless them by, hey, look, I'm so beautiful or I'm so hot or anything like that. But are you trying to attack them and cause them to stumble? Wow. You know? I so should have just rolled with know it. That, yeah. Or are you trying to, what was the other word you said? You said respect the person, right? Mm-hmm. And there's so many girls who are like, hey, I can't help that guys are perverts. Why, why can't I wear this or that, you know? But no, you shouldn't be thinking that way. You sh- if you have a godly brother or sister in Christ, you shouldn't be thinking like, oh, well, if they have a perverted mind, then that's their problem. But you should be doing your best. Yeah, you can't help what they think, even if you dress modest. But you should be doing your best. You mm-hmm. shouldn't be just doing whatever and being Mm -hmm. like oh that's up to you whatever that's your problem you know Mm -hmm. we should do it out of love for one another Mm -hmm. because if god is the lord over your life then you'll be able to wake up in the morning and know whether or not you're dressing with a person in mind not saying you can't look nice like it's totally totally fine totally okay to dress and look presentable but when it's like doing certain things like those jezebel women the bible talks about trying to seduce people or that that's when you know that isn't godly um same thing with guys um we tell guys also to be careful you know don't wear too tight of pants you know be careful (laughs) not to just because guys can do it too guys can try to attract women or attack women um but they're wearing short shorts guys are getting shorter shorts (laughs) nowadays yep it's true oh show my ankles yeah just be careful <laughs> but yeah it's just like the heart behind it you need to mm. know it because you're going to be judged by god and if a young man comes to you and says hey the way you dress you know it's like i'm just or so a young woman just like or an older woman or something kind of says it like don't i know it's easy to take it like a, be offensive yeah. but uh, but realize that like hey we need to just do our part and then you're gonna have to do your part like yeah. you don't have to do exactly what they say but you can do what God's speaking to you. Too. Just got to buy new clothes, you know? Yeah. You grew out of the ones you had. So <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, oh, like, goodness. if people have a half shirt or something, I'm like, hey, you got ripped off. You're supposed to be. Oh, I don't goodness. say that to people, but I think that in my head sometimes. <laughs> great. Okay. 
Can I be alone or kiss my boyfriend and girlfriend? And how far is too far? Mm. How far is too far? If you're asking that question, yeah, say, yeah, it's too you far. shouldn't be asking how close can I get to that how that boundary, right? Me? You should, yeah. How far can I do? And not not in a legalistic way, mm -mm. Um, but in a way like, hey, I don't want to stumble. Like, I know it's not a sin to be here. But I don't want to even flirt with it because I don't want to trip and fall over the line, right? So you want to make sure that you shouldn't be asking how close can I get or how much I can do. But like Vel and I, it was, it was only by the grace and strength of God and, and by godly people in our lives. But we want to stay pure, so we set those boundaries. Not because like if you... If you hug, that's a sin or anything. And like we hugged and stuff, but we said we don't want to kiss, right? Mm -hmm. We want to, yeah, in our flesh. But we say we don't want to kiss because we know that can lead to more. Mm -hmm. And not saying that if you kiss your kiss someone and you're going to get married, that that's like necessarily yeah. a sin, but it can lead to sexual immorality, right? Yeah. And so we don't want that. And so that's why we start step back and it was a whole year so it was hard but it was when we look back on it it was so worth mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. and so rewarding yeah. and actually i don't think people know this but when it says in wedding ceremonies you may now kiss the bride mm -hmm. it's saying you may now like now you can people wait the for whole the, day like for the first but it's time like this yeah. now you can but that's not like a biblical thing but when you think well technically they didn't have dating back then like and mm -hmm. they didn't let them be alone like it was with the family so it is biblical, but also I was, um, you guys can do whatever you want with this, but, um, someone had said, it's okay if you make out unless you just have to be horizontal, a vertical, vertical, <laughs> yeah. but you can't make wow, out right? horizontal. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but yeah. I think just in general, when you talk about you making still, out, yeah. I think that maybe on one side you might be totally pure, but on the other side, I'm like, I'm pretty sure maybe someone well people say getting, like yeah i mean they make the excuse but yeah they feel like oh my brain turned off yeah. so like how are you gonna know that hey i'm staying <laughs> staying vertical right oh. so yeah and just the bible don't. says that um in song of solomon yeah. it says do not stir up or awaken love until it's time or until it pleases until so desires which is talking about marriage because you're mm -hmm. not theirs until you're married i don't care if you've been engaged and you think we're basically together until you say I do and sign the paper well say i do and then i guess you sign the paper afterwards but you're not married like you're not one yet you can't and it says the the bible talks about treating them like a brother or sister like treat women like sisters so would you kiss your brother and sister or brother sister like that no that's disgusting make that's out? No. so gross and so how you look at it is it says you're not even permitted to touch a woman so there's guys touching women and women touching guys in ways they shouldn't either so it's just saying your read the bible <laughs> your is, yeah i like this one guy he was saying um the bible says your body is in temple last time i checked temples are buildings and buildings don't have hands so keep them to yourself and if you don't <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> That's We're talking youth. about youth camp. Yeah. Kids shouldn't touch each other. Kids also shouldn't make purple. Boys are blue. Girls are pink. Also, mm -hmm. we don't do anything to take a life or make a life. I thought Let's red go. and blue make purple. I Whatever. don't know. Okay. Maybe Moving they both along. We, we, I think we All killed right. this. Yeah. So as a <laughs> Christian, will you struggle with sin, man? <laughs> To the day you die, I think you will struggle with things. That's why the sanctification is a process to the day you die. Like I can't say, oh, I will never go back. So I'll never do that. We need to humble ourselves to say, I could do that in an instant. Like I could, if I'm with my boyfriend or girlfriend alone, like you need to realize like you could totally fall, mm -hmm. trip, fall and go horizontal. Like <laughs> it could happen, <laughs> yep. but that's where it's like, we need to humble ourselves. And the Bible talks about in first Corinthians six, such were some of you. Mm -hmm. So there is that sanctification, but to pray that it's not like a blatant sin, like, Oh, I am a homosexual. Oh, I just fornicate. It doesn't matter. God forgives me. Or I can drink and get drunk. God forgives me. It's like that each day you're be becoming perfect. Like the Bible talks mm -hmm. about that. You are asking the Lord, help me refine me. And so I think the struggle will be there until the day we die, until we're in perfection in heaven with the Lord. But yeah, to just admit that, like, mm -hmm. I need help. Yep. Yeah. I like mm -hmm. how dad always says that. And like you're saying, such were yeah. some of you. 
Like, we want that back. We don't want to be, you are blatantly doing this. But um, Bonhoeffer, I was just reading, I read the first chapter of The Cost of Discipleship, and he was saying, there's a phrase he had in Latin or something, or maybe it's German, but it said, sin boldly, and then something else, rejoice in the Lord and give glory to him, or something like that. But, you know, that shocks us. We're like, what? Sin boldly? And don't, you know, he's not saying to just sin, like, just just be a sinner and just blatantly sin. He's not saying that. You have to, you should read the book for that. But uh, because you know that he's saying that it's a costly grace. It's not yeah. just a cheap grace. It's not just, hey, hey, I have grace so I can sin. He's not saying that. But when you understand grace, then you're able to move on and you're able to see, hey, I'm a sinner. So I know that, but I'm not going to let that stop me from serving God. I'm not going to stop that uh let that stop me from being a disciple of God. So we're supposed to make sure that we know we're going to be sinners. We're going to sin. Because if we feel like, hey, I should be perfect as a Christian, and then we sin, then we get all depressed, and then we're not able to be yeah. really used by God. We're just sitting in our depression. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we need to get up and, like we always like to say, fall forward mm-hmm. and get up again. So, Amen. We have 18 yeah. more questions. So all we're right, going to we're, we're pick some of them. We might Sorry. not do. We might be like, hey. You can look at this resource. Okay. The other one is, um, can I be successful and also be a Christian? Mm. So I think what I'll, I'll say this is the Bible talks a lot about against laziness. So it does talk against laziness. So we're not saying when I'm saying any of this stuff, multiple times, the lazy person is not a good person in the Bible. I know people treat laziness and I've, that's one of my, if you say struggle is that at times because I'm like, Oh, it's just so overwhelming. Like, and if I can't do it in this certain way, I just don't want to do it. And then I just end up being lazy. So that's not right. But, um, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, four through five, do not toil to acquire wealth. Be just dis- be discerning enough to de- desist. So, um, I think we can't be striving cause I know people a lot have times, a lot of times have get rich quick schemes, pyramid schemes, things of, I want to be a millionaire. So I need to do all this stuff. And mm-hmm. that is wrong. Cause you're making that an idol of like doing your best to make all this money, but for what? So that for your I, if it's for your kingdom, <laughs> it's going to be burnt up Yourself. and it's moth yeah. and rust are going to destroy it. But to store up treasures in heaven are way more important, not putting down wealth. But the Bible also talks about, um, in Proverbs, 30 30 verse verse 9, for if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the Lord? But if I'm poor, I may steal and thus insult the God's holy name. So it's basically all saying another version, don't make me too rich that I might um, say, who is the Lord? But don't make me too too steal, too poor (laughs) that I might steal and dishonor your name. So it's just Mm -hmm. saying, God, put me exactly where you want me to be. Like, I trust you. I just want to be a hard worker. The Bible talks about not being a lazy servant to not say, not here, you wicked, lazy servant, to work mm-hmm. hard. But your whole thing in life shouldn't be like, oh, I need to do this. Because then it brings a lot of anxiety. A lot of the people, we had a podcast with Tracy Wren, and she was talking about how she was in like a business coach. And a lot of these people, they'll buy these yachts. They'll make their Instagram and stuff look like all amazing, but it's not real. Mm-hmm. It's all scamming. Um, yeah. Not everyone, but like there are a lot of Chris- rich people who are Christian, and they really do it to bless others. Mm-hmm. But it's also like why we learned that it? last week with the kids at youth group mm-hmm. in Matthew six to store our treasures in heaven. Yeah. So that that doesn't mean, right? Like Mariah keeps Not saying, it doesn't mean wealth. be lazy. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you can't have money. Um, you see that it is a hard thing for rich people. Sometimes mm-hmm. you see Jesus talk about that many times. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. No. It just means it's it can be so easy to make that an idol. So make sure you don't do that and ask, am I trying to be successful in the world's eyes or in God's eyes? Mm -hmm. And you see, what is success to God? That's living for him, for his glory. And you can do that by being a successful business person, but make sure it's all for him, that you're glorifying Mm -hmm. him. And that when people see you work hard, even if it's not a success in the world's eyes, even if you're just a hard worker and it's a little job that, hardly anyone sees, but those who see it, they should see that you do it with joy, that you do it for God, 
and you're a great example to them. So Amen. Amen. Yeah, let's move on. All right. So these ones I'm just going to answer really quick because I have verses for mm-hmm. it. And these are top questions, but we could talk about it forever. We might do podcasts on it in the future. I think I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Does this mean I'm not saved? Okay. So mm-hmm. the fact that you think you're bl- you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, my dad always says you haven't. Blaspheme the Holy Spirit is like the people like Pharaoh. Or the fact when, that you're concerned. Oh, the, and, the fact know, that you're concerned. Yeah, the fact that you're like, it. oh my goodness. Like most of the people who ask us this, you can tell they're very concerned. So mm-hmm. like that's like for like Pharaoh when the Holy Spirit's prompting them and wooing them and saying this stuff. And they're just like, no, no, mm-hmm. you're like no. Seared. You're like you just keep rejecting it. it. Yeah. yeah, where you have the choice, but then God seals it. He solidifies it. That's, it talks about the unforgivable sin. It's because you've made the choice. So it's not just because like all of a sudden God's mad at you because you say the Lord's name in vain. Like it's not like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing to help you with this is John 15, just abide, mm-hmm. just continue. If you're scared of that, just seek the Lord, just spend time in the word, pray, cry out to him. And yeah. that's all you really can yeah, do. You and want ask security? for forgiveness if you think you did like go, go to the father and just say, Lord, I'm sorry if I did yeah. anything wrong. Yeah, I was just saying, if you want security as a believer, do what Mariah said. Continually abide. John 15, abide. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's like, people are like, how do I know if I'm saved? Well, are you abiding? Yeah. Okay, then you're probably saved, right? Amen, amen. You're abiding in Christ, so. Right. Um, Why is Jesus the only way? I'm just going to give it simple. John 14, 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, (laughs) the truth, the truth (laughs) and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. So no one could go to God by their good works or anything or by Buddha or Muhammad or anything like that. They have to go through Jesus. So a lot of times people say, well, I believe in Jesus, but I believe that other people, for them it's this, for them it's that. It's like, no, Jesus said that he is the way no one comes to the Father except except through him. So that is why Jesus is the only way because it says it. Okay, what is discipleship and why is it so important? We're just going to give our verse that we have for the <laughs> church, which is Matthew 28, 19. What is that, Morgan? Uh, therefore. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So, great yeah, that's a great commission, and we're supposed mm. to go out and do that. And it doesn't say, you notice, it doesn't say just make converts. Mm. That's great. That's I mean, we're supposed to evangelize, and people have that gift. But then we should bring them, maybe we're not the discipler, but we should get them connected, right? Get them connected to a church. And usually if you bring them to Christ, you're going to start to disciple them. But maybe you have so many and you pass them off to someone, but you want them to be in the word of God. You want them to be at a local church so that they can get connected and stay, right? Because you see so many people, they get excited about Christ, but then no one really follows up. No one really yeah. teaches them how to study the word of God on their own. So they're just like, oh, this is it. Okay. And then they just go back to doing their old thing. And so that's the importance of discipleship. Yeah. And so. if you're scared, like, well, I want to be a disciple. I don't know how. Go to your mm-hmm. church and ask someone. Like, ask a leader and they can also direct yeah. you to someone. Because a lot of times people are just afraid because they're also embarrassed because they're like, I've been a Christian my whole life, but I've never really been discipled. Like, it's not as scary as you think it is. Like, if anything, people are kind of, I don't want to use the word honored, but they're like, whoa, like, this is a responsibility. And when yeah. also when you disciple younger people, it really helps hold you accountable to make sure you're not being a hypocrite, yep. that you are actually living a life of integrity. So it's really powerful. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on. Okay. So this one is if I'm struggling with thoughts of depression, suicide or stuff like watching pornography, what should I do? Hmm. What should you say? Cause I had yeah. made something and Morgan's like, well, you can't just say that. And I'm like, well, I did not Oh no. But no, you but just, no, I was going to explain did a quick note. So my quick she note, said like, having was, accountability and things like that. And that's really good. And that's, we're supposed to have those things. That's but it's not going to deal with the root. Yeah. yeah. That's just dealing that helps with the symptoms and that helps keep it away later. Um, but you know, we can get past that. We can, we're sinners. We know Amen. how to get past those things and really we need to want it. We need to want, we need our hearts changed first, of course. Amen. And that's by the power of the Holy spirit and submitting to him Sometimes people need deliverance. You know, if someone's yeah. coming to Christ, maybe they were demonized. In mm-hmm. Christ, we don't believe that you could be demonized, but we believe that there could be oppression, which is kind of like a monkey on your back. Like 
So if you struggle, you really struggle with anger mm -hmm. and you have and you keep allowing these things, what does the Bible say? That gives a foothold to the enemy. Anger does, right? And so we can pray against those things and we can but we need to want to submit it to God, right? And say, I don't want this anymore. This is no longer my friend. And so we need to do that with pornography. We need to do that with suicide, all these different thoughts that are not of Christ. We need to say, God, I don't want these anymore. And so change our heart and change our mind first and make sure that we, like we said earlier, make no provision for the flesh. Amen. So that's where the accountability comes in. Mm -hmm. That's where the software on your phone, on yeah. your computer, that we're, that's where uh, talking with people and other believers at church and getting that help and encouragement, that's where all that stuff comes in. So, Amen. Yeah. And some resources mm -hmm. are definitely accountable to you and Covenant Eyes. So, yeah. yeah. All right, next question, Morgan. All right. Um, what if I'm struggling? <laughs> you already asked that. So why do I have to go to church if I have a personal relationship with God? Mm. So what's the importance of church, Mariah? First of all, church is essential. I don't care what the COVID people are telling you. It is essential. Strip clubs, bars are not essential. The, the important thing is Hebrews 10, 25, to not forsake the fellowship of believers, especially mm -hmm. as the habit of those, as it, oh, it's a habit of those, especially as the day of the Lord approaches. Mm -hmm. So like, it's going to be, it says that like as the day of the Lord approaches, a lot of people are going to be like, I don't need to go to church. I have my own walk with God. I'm like, it sounds kind of harsh, but you, people get kind of weird when they just are always on YouTube and then they are do it, finding all this stuff. It's like, you need to have people that you're with that are spurring you, that are telling mm -hmm. you, hey, like I've noticed that you uh, like because sometimes when people just haven't even been there people hate when you check on them <laughs> but a lot of times it's because you don't want people to be asking you how you're doing mm. like you feel so much guilt and shame and condemnation which is from the enemy not from god and mm -hmm. if you're even feeling that oh believers they always judge me and make me feel bad i'm like it's not that like mm. the holy spirit is probably convicting you about this stuff, but then you're taking it as condemnation because he's like, he just wants you to change by the power of the Holy Spirit and also by with help of others. Like mm -hmm. it really helps you when you're with others and you realize also that you're not as weird as you think you are. The thing I always tell people, I'm like, if you think you're weird, then you're not weird. But when the people who think, oh, I'm not weird, I have no problems. Those are the people who are usually the weird people. Yeah. And it's so important. And we're not saying that church saves no, you or no. anything like that. We're not saying that like if you, you know, if you're stuck somewhere and you're not going <laughs> to church, you're not saved or no. or that you're sinning. We're not saying that, but we see that it's an important thing to do. And people right? have problems. Yeah. Like a lot of times people have been hurt by church, but it's yeah. like Yeah, churches aren't perfect. No. You're gonna you might go there and you might you might not like the people there, you know, but that's what we need to see. Ephesians chapter four, I believe, says to make allowance for one another's yeah. faults, to forbear with one another. We see in the Bible to be peaceable, right? To love one another. And so it's a, it's a great place to learn that. It's a great place to learn how to be around people and how to interact and how to spur each other on and encourage each other and to walk in the gifts, right? You need the church to do that. You can't you can't just, you know, just pray for miracles you can't just do all these things for your life you know mm -hmm. it's, it's supposed to be to edify edifying it's supposed yeah. to be blessing the church building up so if you're not in church how are you going to walk in that right so we see that's really important amen amen all right um people ask what is your end time belief so that is like eschatology people's end time belief that's what it means um, I always like to define the big terms because I don't like <laughs> it when people just like throw out big words, but then they don't explain it. Mm -hmm. Never like that. But eschatology, it's like the study of the last days. Um, we believe in pre-trib, pre-millennial. So we believe that we are going to be taken up, raptured before the tribulation. And there's a lot of verses um, that go with that. Um, I also mm -hmm. encourage you guys to watch Before the Wrath. That was a really good movie. Um, mm. I forgot. It was with like Jack Hibbs and um, yeah, Jan Jack Markle. Hibbs, J.D. Farag. Yeah. yeah. It's really, it's really uh, cool. Amir Safari. How do you Amir say his Zafati. last name? Amir Zafati. Zafati? I don't yeah. know. The guy who 
does all the Israel stuff. But um, I also like that it talks about in the last days what we're going through. So it doesn't matter, honestly, what your last day belief. It matters how you live because sometimes though mm-hmm. your end time belief determines a lot of times how you live. So if you think, mm-hmm. oh, he's not coming back. They always said that. Usually that's what he said. They said, oh, he always said that. Yeah. And so, so they just do whatever they want. But when you're prepared, you have to be ready because a thief in the night, you can come at any time. Yep. So I think that's really good. Um, it keeps you ready. It keeps you excited. Maranatha to be excited that he's coming back. Um, I also think it's really cool because in Second Timothy 3, it talks about verses 2 through 5. For people will love only themselves and their money. That's happening today. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could change them or make them godly. Stay away from people like that. So we have to be aware. Like there's in the end times, like there's going to be people like that. We see that, Mm -hmm. but that's why we need to be with each other in church, not to just like hide away, but it helps edify us. So then when you are in public, when you are in a job or at the store, you can be a light because you're built up. So yeah, just being prepared. doesn't Mm -hmm. matter end time belief, but it's mattering how you're preparing for it. How are you getting ready? ready. Be ready. If we all believe that Jesus is coming back, we should all be ready. It doesn't matter when. Okay. Are you Calvinist or Arminius? We're biblicists or a biblicist. (laughs) I think it's biblicist. That's actually how it is. But dad says biblicist, which sounds better. And sometimes that sounds like prideful. And we're not trying to be like that, of but course. We're saying like, we don't believe in any. What we're saying yeah. is we're not. We don't want to just follow a man mm-hmm. or follow a doctrine that man made. And yeah, it came from the Bible, but it doesn't mean that it has the balance of the Bible. It means because if you want to be a Calvinist, you could just read the Calvinistic verses in the Bible, and, read and all our, our you could do that. Yeah, you could do that. You could read about all the people, and you can be a strong Calvinist. But then when you start to read the rest of the Bible, you'll be like, but there's Arminianist verses. And really, they're not they're not Calvin's or Arminians. It's it's God's. But you can you can go to that other side of the spectrum as well. And so when we read the word of God, we see both. We see the sovereignty of God, but we also see the free will of man. And we're not going to begin to pretend like we can explain that we try you know, but we also need to be like, hey, this is this is from God and this is much bigger than us. We don't understand it perfectly. We can try to give some examples like, you know, it's kind of like a parade and God can see everything. So he can see that you're going to choose him, you know, and so he's sovereign, mm-hmm. but he can, you know, so we can try to explain it, but you really, we need to trust God in these Amen. areas. Also, Amen. like the Trinity, you can explain it and you can try to, like people do all these different analogies and stuff, but really we need to trust God in certain areas and know that he's much bigger, much greater than us, and we're not supposed to just try to put him in a box. So. Amen. And we're going to yeah. do a podcast on it. Um, not this one, obviously, and not the next one, but the following with Dr. Michael Brown, and mm. he's going to explain the balance. So That'd that's going to be exciting. So stay tuned for that. Okay. Next one are just kind of fun ones, kind of easier ones. So we'll just fly Fire through this. Up. I don't like to read the Bible, but where do I start? Because mm. I want to. I always say the book of John. I think yeah. everyone says the book of John. Well, that's cool that you asked because someone asked me, mm. they're like, I'm kind of coming back to God and I've already read John. What, where else should I go? Mm, so that's good. I would say maybe start in the new Testament. That'd be nice to start in because some of the old Testament can be like, I would say start in Leviticus. But I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I would say start in the gospels, right? Mm-hmm. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Amen. So yeah. And anything, I mean, God's word won't, will not return void, but we like to direct people to towards those because they're a little easier to understand. But still, there's mm-hmm. so much, you know, even for the person who's been Christian all their mm-hmm. life, there's so much in there. So No one asks this, but the question I have is, what are some good commentaries? Not that we should be mm-hmm. going based off that, yeah. right? That's not what we should do. It's always like the Holy Spirit can speak to us. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people do want to know, like, some good commentary. So what do you use as a pastor? Yeah, um... I use David Guzik's a lot. It's mm-hmm. on 
uh, Enduring Word, I yeah. think, dot com and Blue Letter Bible. Yeah. And there's commentaries on that. And then John uh, Corson. I don't think his commentary is on there free. Um, I think the you can, though. you can, but you could buy that, his books. But yeah, he has good sermons. Um, and Matthew then, Henry. yeah, there's a lot of different ones. Matthew I Henry have this has program that has a bunch. So, Logos. I don't know if that would really help people. If you want to get Logos, yeah. It's kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay, what are Christian artists that you would recommend instead of Hillsong and Bethel? I'm assuming also that these people are realizing Hillsong and Bethel, we've kind of said there can be some weirdness with that. So Mm -hmm. what are some good, like, solid things that you kind of know? Obviously, everyone has their weirdnesses. They're not pastors. Like, you got to be careful with artists. I was listening to one, and I think they were like, well, a lot of them don't believe in the Trinity. Not a lot of them. I don't know why I said a lot. Mm -hmm. One of the guys was listening to a rapper. Marcus Rogers, I think he's a, mm. a modalist. Um, yeah. But then there's like some people who are also yeah. Mormons y- make music. We just got to realize that like we're not putting our hope in any, anyone. Like no. we're not putting our hope in these these musicians because like Lecrae, he was cool when I was a kid mm-hmm. and now he's embracing all these different things that mm-hmm. he should not be as a Christian, I don't believe. Yeah. And then you see, um, who else? Well, it doesn't matter, but yeah, it's like we're not supposed to put our hope in man. In you're music, not even supposed yeah. to do that in a pastor. So if you're coming here to Calvary, we're not supposed to put our hope in, in Pastor Craig. Mm-hmm. We put our hope in God. We look to him. We don't go to him like he's Moses and he hears <laughs> from God and we go to him to hear from God. Yeah, we can hear from God through him, through a sermon, but we can go to him. We can go to the mountaintop. So yeah, there's a lot of people. Yeah, I don't know. I like house fires. Yeah. yeah They're good. Yeah, you um, recommend some people. I know. I'm trying to open up my Spotify yeah. right now, but it's saying the Spotify application is not yeah. responding. Well, thank you very much. I'm always hesitant um, to recommend people because yeah. I'm like, I don't know if they're going to freak out. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think like yeah. some ones that have. I recommend my wife. You been know, good is the worship initiative <laughs> with Shane and Shane. Those are good. Oh, yeah. Um, Bethany Bernard. She's mm. married to one of the Shanes. I would say right now, I kind of stick with the worship initiative. They've been pretty good, mm. you know. Yeah. I've kind of liked that. We've all been kind of liking those. Okay, and then the next question, from church history, who inspires you? Who inspires mm. you, Morgan? Wow. I wasn't ready for that one. Mm. I can start. Yeah, you start. I like Corey Ten Boom. Like mm. She has an amazing story and how... She never got married and she was just content. She was really close at one point and I share her story one time, but just her life and what she went through, um, going through the concentration camps Mm -hmm. and just having to forgive the guy who killed her sister and like all this stuff. So Corey Ten Boone for sure. Yeah. about you? That's funny because I I was telling you, I was just reading the cost of discipleship and I was just thinking of Bonhoeffer Bonhoeffer and I'm like, That's a similar person because mm-hmm. I mean similar time and yeah. what they're going through. Yes, Hitler. But what strikes me about him so much and I haven't read much about him. I've heard a lot of good things, but just that that faith and that trust in God in the midst of, you know, persecution and in the midst of possibly losing mm-hmm. his life and he ultimately did lose his life. But just like people said that he just you saw such a trust in God. He wasn't like fearful he wasn't just all scared he had such a trust in god so man yeah him and then right now. i think um because the other one was some resources and also mighty man mm. of god aw tozer yeah it's a good one the pursuit of god it's a great yeah. book it's really small too Spurgeon. so i don't really read a lot of books yeah. but i read that one <laughs> and, and then, then um, Moody. Yeah. yeah um finney mm. wigglesworth smith wigglesworth um also uh uh, George Mueller, he has mm. an amazing story. So yeah, all uh, these Leonard mighty men. Raven Hill, yeah. Uh, Keith Green, yeah. Yeah, all these so. men. Um, and yeah, you know, they they might not have the same doctrine as us perfectly, but you see, they they wanted to just know God. They wanted to love Him, and they we all see know in part and you know prophesy in part, and we don't see clearly. But that we need to make sure that we have the fundamentals down, though. I'm not saying to compromise. I'm not saying to embrace weird things, you know, make sure it's in the word of God. But there's different things like even 
even the post, I mean, even in the, the tribulation things, you know, there's ones that are heretical, I believe, but there's, there's things that you can yeah. kind of, it's not always black and white in those areas, but we need to, if it, if someone's saying Jesus isn't Lord, mm. then something's wrong. You know, like, you know talking like, against stop, the Trinity. You know? Or if the, even in the gifts and stuff, sometimes I'm like, Hey, the word of God says not to do this. Like, we can't be doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. So if it's clearly in the word of God, we have to call those things out. But yeah. yeah. So books and resources, um, definitely Leonard Ravenhill, um, Dr. Sam Storms. He gave us his book convergence. And so this is a good one. Um, Pilgrim's progress. We just watched that with the youth. <laughs> that one's good. Um, that was Spurgeon's John favorite. Bunyan. Yeah, yeah. It's like ri written 600 years he, ago. I think it's he said he read it a hundred times or something wow. like that. Yeah, or Pilgrim's he, Progress. More than that, yeah. This um, present darkness, this one's piercing darkness. Also, these aren't men and women of God that people well know, but that's the thing that I like is um, this one's the Voice of the Martyrs, Jesus Freaks, Heart of Fire, but this one is Women, for women. This actually, I think it can be free if you go up, go to their website. You guys can get this for free. Mm -hmm. Don't call me on this. But... Um, these are men and women of God that you don't know their names. They're not big time people, but they're being martyred for the Lord. And a martyr doesn't mean that you have to die, but we need to be faithful witnesses to the Lord until death. Like until we die, doesn't mean we have to be persecuted the way they are. But this is really inspiring to wake me up to realize that my life isn't that bad. Like there are people suffering mm -hmm. in other countries and yeah. they really have to choose like, we're Am I gonna too follow? comfortable here. Yeah. yeah. So reading that is also, and also I recommend the Daily Grace Co. I have the Bible handbook. It's really cool. And they're all really pretty stuff too. Yeah. And they're Bible studies. So stuff like that. Um, yeah. Anything else? What Morgan? are your goals for this podcast, Brian? Well, my goal is, oh, <laughs> so I'm really excited because we're going to start doing testimonies from within, or I was thinking like mm. testimony Tuesday or... <laughs> stories from within but stories from our church so if you guys go to calvary valley and you have well we already know so many testimonies are so powerful that you guys don't know about because it doesn't always have mm -hmm. to be like all these people with all these subscribers and followers and like mm -hmm. it's also just simple common men uneducated people like it was talking about in acts 4 13 mm -hmm. that we want to show that god is really doing a work here and in your guys's lives so we might do that every one like once a month or something. So stay tuned for that. Um, also just this podcast, making it where we can do like Q and A's. We can have um, testimonies from our church or just other people like that. Um, we're also having Joshua Lewis come on Oct October, August 29th at our 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. So starting August 1st, we're going to have two services. So praise God for that. Mm -hmm. And we are going to have him speak on the gifts and moving in the gifts decently in order. And yeah, yeah. so stay tuned for that. And another thing I think I some have another resource real oh, yeah, quick. Um, Mike Winger. I like, I mm -hmm. like him. Um, he's a Calvary pastor in Calvary um, <laughs> in California, California. Yeah. And right. What'd you say earlier California about California? Cation. Yeah. But <laughs> he's he's there and i believe his podcast and youtube channel is bible thinker mm -hmm. and his name is mike winger and yeah. so hopefully that would be cool if we could get him on the podcast yeah. sometime but uh, also yeah. um got questions is a good resource i think and um the bible project mm. they explain books in the bible pretty well um yeah but um some other fun ones before we end really quick so favorite thing to do after church sleep <laughs> it's tiring yep. being pks that was another question was it like being pk yeah. um it's a lot of work like it's tiring but it's so rewarding and fulfilling mm -hmm. like we were talking my dad was talking about last night it's so honoring like it's so honoring it's so actually like amazing mm -hmm. that we get to do this yeah like it's just a blessing and we don't deserve it um we're not in the world's eyes qualified, but it doesn't have to be like that. It's like whether or not we are called. Are we just doing it because, oh, our dad's a pastor and mm. we don't want it to be nepotism. We don't want it to be just because our dad's a pastor. We can do whatever we want. We don't want to be like Eli's sons. We don't mm. want to be like that. We want to do it because God's called us to do it specifically. So, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So 
Um, wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Okay. So you guys can also support the podcast um, down below because we want to be able to get amazing guests, like bring people down and you guys can see those guests. We'll have that. We'll have Joshua Lewis. Like I said, um, if you haven't seen him, we did an episode with him talking about moving the gifts decently in order. But this when he comes, we'll be talking more about stepping out in the gifts like prophecy, um, like healing and stuff like that. So I'm excited for that. And hopefully this and time you won't have COVID. Yeah, but. exactly. It's going to be great. Yeah. And God's definitely been doing Wasn't the work. Wasn't he like so. stuck in his Yeah, he had COVID. <laughs> he was stuck in his little daughter, his little daughter, his daughter's room yeah. and all that. So now he'll be healthy and good um, for that. But yeah, thanks so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe and share this video. Um, if you are on Spotify or that, and you would like to watch us, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube and also follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations to see the behind the scenes, to submit your questions. So we can do more Q&As like this. This was fun with my brother. Mm -hmm. Found yeah. it. And we also have our sponsors, Mission Heating and Cooling. If you guys want to check them out, they'll be in the description below. And I think that's it. Anything else, Morgan? Yeah. We love you. We love you guys. Yeah. And we'll see you next week. Thanks so much and God bless. See you guys.